Good evening. And I realize I'm standing between uh, you know this conversation and uh, dinner, but I'll try to be quick. What's interesting is a lot of uh, really sort of, uh, I would say the heavy duty and a lot of the back end conversations ended up uh, you know, with quite a bit of high and a lot of discussions. Uh, my focus here is going to be in the front end almost how do brands actually interact with consumers and how do we sort of make that better. So I think before I start, just a quick show of hands. Uh, how many of you uh, really go through sustainability uh, information before making cho consumer choices? So, uh, I mean, we can see quite a few hands coming through. I, I, and the reason why I'm sort of trying to put this in, in, in focus is because these are discussions we have internally every day. And a lot of things that we are doing, and most of us are doing here, will usually end up with, you know, uh, this communication that we are doing or this product that we are doing, how much is it going to uh, affect in the bottom line? The second question is, when was the last time you loved the product and then you dropped it because it did not have good sustainability credits? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, four. So brilliant. I mean, I mean we, we, we can see the answers here itself. So there's a lot more to be done within this space. And I actually hope to learn from my panelists here on how to do this better. So just to start off, uh, I'll just share an anecdote. Uh, in our boardrooms, we had this discussion that sustainable banna hai, sustainable banna hai. Uh, so somebody told me at that point, senior person, that if I am doing all this, we will extra charge nahi kar paenge. So at that time, uh, you know, the, the only question I was trying to say that, look, uh, as brands and all of us are mass brands here, we have huge impact on consumer choices. I said, if we don't do that, we will definitely be penalized. Don't look to be awarded, but try to see that you're not penalized in the future. The reason being because I, I think in the 1980s and stuff, you would have known uh, being sweatshop free labor was a big thing as a marketing thing. That's no longer there because it's a, uh, you know, con considered a hygiene now. And I think in the future, we will not be able to do these actions uh, that we are continuously doing at the moment. We definitely ca cannot have businesses which are damaging. So with that thought, I want to start this conversation. And uh, I will focus on brand and the consumer and how do we make informed con and a, uh, therefore a conscious consumption. Okay. So a very quick one. Uh, most of us are aware most brands have clear, uh, I would say, sustainable policies. And uh, so I would like to start with uh, Ashwinder, uh, you know, this question is directed to you. Uh, you did mention you were an activist almost in this approach. So I would like to know about your policy, how you sort of chose it. And specifically with the view on understanding the, or sort of closing the loop on metric, as in what worked, what didn't work, and how you were able to do that. So that helps all of us. So a good question. And um, I have 33 years to address. So my answer can be really long, but I will try to be brief. So uh, if I see your question into three parts, so I will say that, of course, it was the personal values which, uh, you know, uh, drived me towards creating something. Of course, uh, consistency was not only the material what we select. And uh, at that time, the knowledge about anything was very, very rare, very difficult to get. And then uh, how to cross check the authenticity of the knowledge. So I'm talking about 1990 when I was in college when I started. So understanding that 100% cotton is a good product. So first eight years we were just doing 100% cotton and nothing other than voice against leather, voice against polyester. And then the life changed, uh, you know, the knowledge came in and then we understood that the water consumption is a bigger thing and then the biodegradable is something and then CSR is something. So just a small thing that when we started USI in 1990, in 96, we formed a USI Enviro Club. And the whole initiative was into behavior change. So we started a painting competition in which we labeled the painting competition and we called it Let's Paint the World Green. This project has started in 1996. And for 21 years, we kept inviting students from slum and good schools. Every year, annual event, and the prize goes to the children from slum, a child from slum. And the best painting will convert into a t-shirt. And then inauguration will be done by somebody like Shabana Azmi did once. And so why I'm uh, packaging the uh, answer of the question is that 
it was not only the selection of the material but the positioning of the brand and the, the messaging and the the marketing was linked to that so the carry bag we designed the first time was a jute bag and that time jute bag was out of you know like we used to go to calcutta to get jute bag so then we shifted to paper bag then then the paper bag initially was a handmade paper bag so which used to be not consistent and then color bleeding of paper bag was a concern and then came khadirma mill and then now it's been 31 years my paper bag is biodegradable and the no one side is dedicated to environment we don't even write uni style on that side <clears throat> so to answer your question again the emphasis on the that living it truly so the training to the staff the selection of the flooring at the store the material is mdf for a compressed wood what is the life of the wood what is the music system what we doing to so e waste so you know the music system has to be of certain quality the the associate like if we are using soroski the adhesive used to fix the crystal so let's buy it from soroski or oh, it is 10 time more expensive and we don't know how to fix it so let's pay them to get uh, you know to get it fixed so i was lucky that i didn't had a boss to report on pnl of my company that was a play place which i got so all the entrepreneurs or the business decisions and the merchant mms they need freedom and they need trust to create sustainability in the life so this is what uh, you know i would like to sure. add yeah uh, and uh, just in terms another question follow up question was uh, in terms of understanding sort of metrics on that do you uh, see some sort of return on investment apart from of course you running it yourself because a lot of us here are you know uh, do have that question every day in our minds so the uh, organic and sustainability and this space this is very difficult because people uh, seldom support so in 2000 six the first time we did we wanted to do uh, organic and got certified because at usi it was very clear it has to be authentic and got certification was so expensive that in my supply chain how will i take so i shifted my order to a factory in calcutta raj lakshmi textiles and they had got certification in 2006 because they were working for brands in norway so i had to know somebody who was related to the owner and get my production done and then on a uh, organic cotton uh, range we did a whole range of endangered species so it's not only the the material but then message and now if i'm transforming the message on endangered so i partnered with wwf so wwf was our knowledge partner and doing this but in india at that time and now i don't know that if people they, they think why are you doing this and to answer your question difficulty that i didn't had even one customer who came and bought that product because it was talking about endangered species and because it was organic but that time but now times have changed so i i you know rest this case sure and no. of course this is a aware market yeah a lot of aware customers so there's a yeah. lot different now sure thank you i uh, i think what's happened is of course the last 30 years since then there is a lot of information and that's something which also bothers me i think today there's too much of information so, so when somebody is making that split second decision how do we help them make that choice and uh, and, and a quick choice so i've always thought about you know what the best way would be a red yellow and a sort of a, a you know orange uh, so red, red yellow green sort of a system so now the next question i'm sort of trying to put to, uh, forward to vivek uh, vivek uh, you do have the real heroes campaign uh, you know with human being a uh, being human and but how do you sort of like while this is a much more longer conversation around authentic uh, and, and and a social piece how do you sort of s- simplify this quick uh, information uh, giving to the consumer okay uh, you know many of these answers lie in uh, how you look at the purpose once i know why a certain purpose is associated with my brand so the way we we uh, make it very very crisp in terms of answers being human is being conscious for us right and being conscious is not just conscious to the environment and you know uh, to be frank uh, i was sitting there and thinking uh, this is a sustainability conclave look at the number of plastic bottles around yeah uh, it's it's not to uh, sort of point an error point something that is wrong but 
it is something that and we we are happily sitting and drinking from it right yeah. so and we are wearing black also <laughs> <laughs> sorry no it's okay. that's on me that's, that, that's on me that's on me okay so i'm saying that the way we see uh, being conscious is on three pillars actually people planet animal in our case currently there's a lot more that hinges on people because the brand started with a purpose to serve the underprivileged right and on the people side we have slowly started extending that so multiple initiatives right and you do not need to talk about every single one so uh, i didn't know the term i learned a term green blushing you do it but you don't tell you know that you've done it right uh it's something which has been there in the brand i mean there is education and healthcare of underprivileged children whatever support to a lot of people around the time of covid nothing got spoken about uh and and today is actually one of those rare occasions where we put out these stand cards saying did you know we do this we have we have tried to do our bit on inclusion uh have someone who's got some kind of physical challenge employed in our store create an equal employability as an opportunity a part of our society lgbtqia plus plus nobody addresses them really we have a line that's dedicated to them india it's a little sensitive we stay cautious about uh, conversations around that line it's called blur but it's there and this is something that we've started doing about three seasons back continues to be there irrespective of how it is performing that line is going to be there in all the stores it's not necessary that everything that you do may or may not uh, you know may have an impact on day one this is a longer play we have we have started fair trade very very quietly 3500 farmers what we are trying to do now is since we see that this subject is a place where generation which is now the generation next z millennials whatever you call them they are far more sensitive we are not doing complex things to be frank in a week's time you'll see in my store qr code that will show you a video that will show you the farmer speaking in their own language telling you hey you know what the shirt you're wearing is a cotton that i grew and guess what i got a higher price for this that's it what has gone away from me and you know we spoke about sustainability being expensive uh in our category apparel and you know brands the way markdowns annualized markdowns have changed for all of us as a business 12 years back 15 years back annualized markdowns used to be in the range of 8 to 10% today for most brands it's sitting in the range of 22 to 25% that much money is anyways going away it's not it's 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 just there as a number in your books it's not cash one thing i figured is that if you are able to in today's day through simple communication tell your consumer that hey you know what we have made an attempt it's not necessary that you claim the holy grail we have made an attempt to be a little better than what i was yesterday today the consumer takes it i have not spoken about fair trade to my consumers yet uh and people from retail would know that a weekly sell through of 4% is considered good my fair trade line today just because the label carries a fair trade logo my staff tells the consumer that what is fair trade is sitting at about 4.5 to 5% sell through per week is doing better than the average so i i don't know if there is any complex communication that's required in this case i think the complexity in executing is is actually in executing the real deal people see it so i think uh, like uh, dr tyagid mentioned you know movement is more important than actually perfection progress versus perfection so absolutely. so doing doing smaller things is going to definitely help absolutely absolutely okay. 100% okay. cool uh, th- thank you for that uh, the second question uh, the third question i would like to ask uh, rajan hi and again uh, if you do want to sort of you know pitch in on any of the questions feel free to because i've sort of put together for each of you in some questions uh, so rajan a lot about uh, you know the tech data analytics because you know what you're doing is definitely in the e-commerce side and just wanted to know how does that help in the whole communication process for sustainability for you 
I think before I start, I think we always believe that you tell a story, right? Um, I've spent almost 90% of my life outside India. I'll just give you two examples of how sustainability works, you know, before I get into the point. 2014, from, I don't know, all of us must have gone to Dhaka because Bangladesh is today the second largest manufacturer of apparels, right? 2014, from the airport to Gulshan, you can see garbages across both sides of the road. How many of them are gone today? And did you see a single garbage? Okay, look at the other side. 2014 Bombay, 2023 Bombay. Full garbage? So I think, unless until you are not coming from inside that I want to change, no matter what we do, the change is never going to come. Okay. I've been to a, I should not take a name specifically. I've been in India for last nine months. In fact, I started Being Human, so this gentleman is here. <laughs> I, I was the one who really launched Being Human in India uh, in 2012. So in the last nine months, I've been traveling India because when I came back to India, I wanted to start something on my own. Now, if you look at India, India is a pile of apparels at the length and breadth of the country, right? You put your finger, there's an apparel. So we thought we want to do something different. That's how the name came, Roar for Good. So our aim is to do good. Now good can be, like he said, it could be people, it could be planet, it could be product, anything for that matter. But we thought anything we do, there has to be a story in that product. So I visited, of course, there are two places where the apparel makes, right? One is, of course, north and one is south. First, I'll take the south, uh, north part of it. So I went to north. I want to not, I will not know, tell the state and all. I'm sure a lot of people will understand. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just say that was a friendly pat there. <laughs> so I went to this I'm place. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's all, see, at the end of the day, we are all Indian. I'm just saying is that, see, I think the thing has to change, right? So I went to this place. To find that place, I have to have a microscope in my hand. They have about, I think, I don't know, 5,000, 6,000 factories. And the signboard is for A4 size. Okay, so that's the first best part of that place. So I told them, you know, I want to start sustainability. Are chaddo yar, sustainability, what sustainability? <laughs> Just sell this product. You say, I'm making for 200 rupees, I'm making for three. I said, sorry, I'm not in that business, you know. I don't want to get into those. I can make money, you know, putting that. I want to. Frankly speaking, none of them agreed. I spent a week, nobody agreed to work on my sustainability part of it. Then I went to South. Every place I went, they, oh, they got so excited. Guys, come. Something you're talking which is very different. Let's start working on it. And that's where, you know, you feel that there's somebody who's understanding the language of what you're trying to talk. So coming back to the sustainable part of it, I just came from today from Bombay to here. 11.15 minute flight. The flight took off at 12 o'clock. So 45 minutes, the engine is on. Please understand that. Unless until all of us collectively don't understand where the pain points are. Isolation may come hoga. Nothing will work in isolation. I try to do sustainable better, but my environmental is dirty. What's the point? So I'm just saying, I entered this building, like he pointed out plastic bottle. How many of us are really wearing eco-friendly apparels today? One, two, three, Partly. four, five. And we are in? So partly, yeah. A sustainable, right? I was asking Lokesh, my friend here, what should I wear? So because, okay, I'm wearing a linen. I'm just, you know, I'm sure we are in this industry. We are all wearing linen. So unless until you are not proud of what you're trying to do, you can't change the world, right? Now we are doing a t-shirt, which is completely done from the flower extract. Okay, please visit my website, roadforgood.in. Now these are not easy processes, guys. It is not easy. The first thing they say, Hogani. Then you go to South. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With all due respect, guys, I'm not blaming anybody. But I'm just saying, if you don't change, please look at Bangladesh today. When I joined Bangladesh 2012, uh, sorry, 2014, their export of apparel was $18 billion. Today it is $43 billion or I think $50 billion. And where are we standing? Are we are okay. Chal rahe na? Chodo yaar, oh sab. In what is the R&D amount spent in India? We don't believe in R&D. 
that I, my father has been making, my fa forefather is, why are you going to come and tell me to change this? Yeah. But who will change? If we don't change it today, best part is that when we, we did a small survey before we started this brand and we only targeted 18 to 35. The first question they ask, how much carbon emission are you going to do? Which is good to hear, right? The same thing if I ask a 45, 50, and we all survived. Where are you going to do all this thing? Third thing is that we are making a shoe. I don't know if you just go to my website. Sorry, I keep promoting my brand because it's just three months old. <laughs> we are making a shoe which is made from pet bottle. Okay, the shoe is only 300 grams. Okay, it's a lighter shoe. It's made from pet bottles, which has an EVA. That's unfortunately I didn't get what I wanted. So the pet. How many of us know that the pet bottle which we recycle, 40 persons are. <laughs> new bottles <laughs> because we don't want to take the pain to collect or find a collector and then I recycle it. So I told this guy I want a certificate otherwise I will not take from him. Of course he gave me a certificate because he's the same guy who did a jacket for the prime minister. So, so he gave me a certificate but I'm just telling he himself told me 40% is I am buying fresh bottle because I am not able to get what I want. So there's an opportunity. Now who is going to look into the opportunity? So I think you know, I can keep going on and on. We have done one more collection, which is basically bamboo, right? Bamboo is the fastest growing, you know, we can say, you know, the plant. So you don't need to, I'm not saying that I'm going to do, uh, do erosion sort of thing. What is the best part of the innerware of bamboo? It's so light, it's so cool, it's, you know, it's lightweight. It feels, you know, you feel comfortable when it's wearing it. Now, the, the uh, session we had before, it was such an eye opener for me. I can take video of all of you and put onto my screen on my website and I just start educating. Unless you don't educate the consumer, sorry guys, it's not going to sell. We can all talk big things here. You have to tell and today's generation are very excited about it. So coming back to you, 40% of the footwear is returnable on an e-com platform, right? Because footwear, everybody's size of a 42, my 42, your 42 is going to be different. So that's why footwear has a maximum return. So we launched something called try on. So you try it on, on your footwear. And then I, my job is to make your life easy. Also, little carbon emission get reduced because if it is written, there is a carbon emission, right? Mm -hmm. So we try to do small, small thing. We have tied up with a company called Grotry. I'm sure a lot of people know. Why did we try with Grotry? There are so many people who do, you know, plantation. Grotry gives you a certificate, which has a code on it. And you can trace your plant, where it has been planted and what is the stage of it. So we are trying to do a little different. That's where the road for good. So just to answer your question is that using technology in a way which doesn't harm the environment. I'm not saying I'm doing great. We're just three months old, but I'm thinking we are trying. If you don't try, then nothing will happen. Right? That's not so. so I think uh, new service models and sort of traceability to a large extent is uh, you know what you talked about. Also, a lot of things that you talked about was about uh, getting into the product itself. In fact, a common theme around here is a personal perseverance in this pro project. So uh, the question also was around data also. Uh, and uh, the, because that's the more, I would say, unemotional part of this conversation. So where does that fit into, into the consumer marketing part of it? Uh, like I said, you know, today everything is on a click of a button, you get mm -hmm. everything. But how do you use it? And how much do you milk it out? Sure in a better way is what, you know, all make or break, sure, you know. Sure. So I think we are at a very early stage, you know, we are looking at today our database is about 125 consumers. I have an email ID. So sure. that's my data. Sure. Okay. That's my original data, right? Okay. But I can always go to Google and find that. But I don't think so that's going to be the useful part of it for us. Sure. We are going to work on this 125 email ID, what we have, and okay. then see that what is the consumer. Because I personally send the mail to all of my consumers because only 125, okay. so I can sure. do that. Sure. Okay. Once we become bigger, then it's a different Sure. Story, so. Cool. Thank you. In fact, one very interesting part was you mentioned how the young consumer versus the older consumer having a split. And uh, so this is where I actually want to come to you, Dheeraj. I think you definitely are uh, in the young consumer space and uh, you know, you're, you're selling to them. And so I wanted to understand your uh, feeling of sustainability there. How does it resonate with them? And how critical do you think it is? And how do you improve in that space? So uh, I know I'm in a sustainability, you know, conclave and I'm supposed to say that sustainability was a chai and this is how it is going and all. But then I would rather be honest, right? I'll tell you what I exactly think and I see around me, right? 
so i think sustainability especially for the indian audience is lot of marketing right uh log kar rahe ek rahe hain but baat sau ki kar rahe hain it's little bit like csr right you that you do little bit but then you're talking about uh, you're talking a lot about it right that that's something that i see around me right and the second thing is we are placing the west as our role model and uh, if i have to use another we- uh, word for west it has to be hypocrite right and i strongly believe this and i'll tell you I- i've had personal examples with how west is approaching this and i think is not the right way of doing it right so just to take our example um, you know uh, we have been working in europe for about two and a half years right and uh, earlier when we started uh, our packaging was not so sustainable and then about a year back uh, we started using sustainable packaging and guess what hamare products inverted nahi ho rahe the i wouldn't name the retailer but he is one of the biggest uh, retailer in europe right and uh, at the end of the month i get a 4 5000 euro ka bill every month right for 2 3 months and it, we just couldn't figure out what's happening right and then later we came to know that they have a policy that every product that gets inverted in their warehouse has to have a plastic whatever you know the cover and this is a retailer which is doing 10 billion plus uh, you know business every year right uh, we have a europe which talks about lot of this but has given a free pass to sheen and wish and they move right and i don't need to tell you what kind of sustainability they are following so what's unfortunately happening in europe is that uh, and especially what our experience is it has become a lot about talking good about sustainability getting certifications but not necessarily understanding whether you are making a real impact and what i think makes a real impact in sustainability is two things right one if you are able to marry your business objective with sustainability i think you have a winner i'll give you an example right um, so uh, i would not claim that we do lot of things on sustainability like some of our other brands and senior partners here right but uh, one of the one of the things that we started doing few years back is we know that when you are making apparel uh, typically you use 77 78% of the fabric gets used and 20 23% of it gets wasted right so straight away you have 23% of the fabric which is uh, going waste right so we decided for example to use it to make accessories ribbons hair bands things like that right and straight away we moved that number from 77 78 to 90 and you have an positive impact of 12%. I have seen this in Walmart. Ganesh is here and uh, you know we work together. Uh initially and I was in the very very early stages of Walmart, right? Uh when we were setting up the large format stores in India, uh, one of the decision our HR had taken was to have differently able people uh in the cash tills in our stores, right? And uh, initially a lot of people took looked at it as a social thing or a sustainability thing. but later we realized that just by doing that we had solved one of the biggest problem of retail which is turnover that especially in a store a large format store where you have 60 70% of the cost of the associates leaving every year you had given opportunities to those differently able people who stuck with you for life right who were there for 2 years 3 years 5 years right so i think uh, if sustainability has to become a bigger movement i'm sure there'll be good people and there'll be great brands which will or uh, do it at the top right and here we spoke about sustainability and we had three four hands going up and we are 0.1% of the general public we need to realize that right so when we are talking about the general janta even in europe or us we are talking about 100% customer whatever customer here we are talking about 0.1% customer and in that we had maybe 20 30% people who are who are thinking about sustainability so for me if sustainability has to become important and it has to become a movement i think it can only become by three things predominantly one if brands are able to marry the business objectives with sustainability i think that's going to make a huge difference second we need government who understands what actually makes a difference right so i know we keep bashing india and we keep doing lot of this whatever right but for example if you look at uh, all the packets that we receive from flipkart and walmart and uh, amazon and all of that we have seen that distinct change where it has moved from plastic to uh, to you know brown covers believe me in europe even now that is not the case uh he was talking about south and he was talking about ludhiana right how did the change happen in tirpur right how did the change happen in uh, in the south 8 10 years back the government took a call 
that they will not allow the water to get discharged in the in the river so we had the industry go through a tough phase of one or two years where they had to figure out you know what do they need to do to kind of just stay alive but then tripur changed then tamil nadu changed right that's actually government taking a decision and uh, you know making a difference versus what's happening in europe is i think lot of this certification lot of this uh, ngo kind of work right i know i'm 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 maybe in the same audience and i'm bashing it a little bit but uh, you know that's how and third i think what is really going to make a difference in sustainability is if we are able to kind of make it a customer movement right the uh, it's very simple businesses do what the customer want so if over a period of time we are able to create that uh, uh, you know uh, if you are able to create that thing in in the minds of the customer that we want sustainable product brands will be forced to create sustainable products it's as simple as that so i think if i were in a in a position of power if i were in a position of where i can kind of make these changes these are broadly the three things that i'd be looking at thank you devesh i think uh, fascinating uh, while small steps but in the right direction i would say and in fact it's best to have everybody together rather than actually one saying the other so that's a good step in that way uh finally i think i'll come to you kiruba uh i have had you know you know we we spoke about different parts of the sort of uh you know the communication phase one of the things which really uh you know gets to my mind is uh, the idea of advocacy and co consumer uh, you know retention so from a category like laundry that's something very interesting for me because yes there is continuous uh, you know there's a regular buying frequency is high purchase and it's a refilling product so my interest here was does sustainability help sustainability help you in advocacy retention and actually increasing uh, you know engagement with the brand for yourself yeah i think you asked this question what is the roi on sustainability to me customer retention is roi right now you may not really measure it immediately but of course yes. people come back again and again right um unlike any other category you know a t-shirt can be used for cleaning the floor or cleaning the vehicle the product that i deal with cannot be used for anything so <laughs> it is a very very difficult category when it comes to sustainability and we have to take that steps to really make it happen right so you cannot cannot really uh, pass on a bra to somebody else very very difficult you know somebody to use that beat panties for that matter mm -hmm. it cannot be cut and used for any of the things that you use in the so the first thing that we did uh, in terms of uh, sustainability is putting a right raw material or a high quality raw material and in india to really pay the, pay the price for a smallest product you know a t-shirt is longer people are open to spend some 50 rupees excess but bra is very small really they will itna chota conception mein why is why are they so expensive is the question while i would i need to put 13 components in the product and other stuff so the first thing that we did is put the right raw material second educate consumer why am i slightly premium to the other local brands because an organized market in lingerie is very very big compared to any other i mean like sari and uh, uh, lingerie has a an organized market which is really larger so we need to tell that why am i slightly more premium i am putting a right raw material and uh, in terms of really uh, i mean like i i touched upon you know uh, the consumer we have to educate them in such a way that they are okay i mean like okay if the bra because all our products undergo testing not just three times because general gpt is three times i wash i see how much of uh, uh, color change is happening how much is the product uh, shape is we do test at least 30 times because our products are washed more more number of times rather than a t-shirt because the woman uses three times a week we assume that she puts it into a machine immediately so we do 30 washes after 30 washes the color should not fade the 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 shape should not uh, uh, deteriorate everything is checked so longevity is first thing that we we we, we don't communicate it very much saying that hey our bras will stay for 100 washes no that is something that is completely Uh, on the consumers but we put that as a first check whether our products are, uh, really last for a longer time because today uh, in wash care and anyway, while we are talking this we are also looking at how do we educate consumer on washing because i say hand wash i don't care even as a consumer as I me mean, i load it into the washing machine i i i don't i don't even read the wash care or what i have to really so the carbon footprint that we are talking about 25 percentage is in consumers hand if they really maintain the product very very well 
it stays for a longer time leave the brand deliverables on the quality and other stuff consumer should take that extra care so we are talking about how do we tell them please take care of your product like a human being like i think uh, ganesh mentioned if it is a human being oh i am in a hot sun you know i am put in a tumble which is at 40 degree so we need to tell that you know you take care of the product so educating the consumer becomes very very important in our category as what is that that we have done again for us we need to we cannot go with i mean like right now blends are a bigger problem we cannot really go multiple uh, multiple uh, uh, you know tri blend or anything because you really can't segregate you can't really uh, put it into a recycling uh, model our we have 13 components minimum 13 components you know it has hook and eye with, with a different composition it has elastic with a different composition it has a folder elastic with a different composition a shell fabric a pad multiple things everything is a different uh, material i if i really need to really unassemble i mean like dismantle it and give it for any of the recycling is also very difficult so the only thing that we tell consumer is use it for a longer time and that is what we are after that thing. and uh, just out of interest do you have a circularity or a take back uh, policy also yeah so we i mean like we do a campaign uh, twice a year which is byob which is not the acronym we all know which is bring your old bra so what we do is we try to get the old bra uh, and we see what we can repair but we don't really give it to the consumer back but can we pass it on to people who really need it so we redo we refurbish it is an expensive affair but what we are att attempting to do is please don't think about your old bra being waste because you can't do anything please bring it back we will see what we can do so we had a partnership with lot of ngos who can take this bra many times we been pushed back saying hey this will not be a product that we can go and say that we are giving it uh, to consumers right because this is such a niche category uh, so we do kind of a refurbishing and we see what we could do uh, for that so fascinating i think specifically for this category it's an intimate uh, piece and uh, actually uh, increasing life you know not ensuring that it doesn't go to the landfill itself is a big thing so you know uh, and when you did launch that did you see a huge uptake on uh, consumer yeah see i mean like we are a retailer we are a brand we need to use uh, thing very well mm -hmm. while we don't really market very well but whoever comes in we mm -hmm. really convert them into the next shop sure. so that okay. itself is a a big a big, uh, big bring back of the consumers for that matter and people also feel little okay because this they cannot give it to anybody um, and sometimes your body changes every 6 months because yeah. of the women so i mean like you have you cannot use that bra anywhere it is unused or sparingly used you tend to bring back and uh, you know you get that uh, incentive sure. of getting some kind of easy coins from our yeah no well, thank you thank you uh, in fact when we are talking about brands purpose and communication one of the big things which always crops up is green washing so i just wanted to open this panel up to uh, you know I, if anybody wants to take this question on thoughts of green washing and what you are doing uh, within your brands and companies to ensure that you don't do that anybody green washing yeah. anti green washing i i if you see us uh, we have barely spoken about things that we do i think one of the most important things is to be 500% sure before you speak about something that even if you're doing something it may not be perfect until it is perfect there's no point talking yeah uh we live in an industry where the government tells you that on your product tag you write the manufacturer's name and there are brands who who write marketed manufactured and marketed by to hide the name of the manufacturer and and i don't get it because you know the point is that are you i are, are you so worried that somebody is going to reach your manufacturer and make the same product and trust me it's not a rocket science right or you got you're not sure whether the manufacturing facility is of a certain kind where you know you would want to see you would want your label seen there can be only two reasons there's no third reason so i think uh, the point is to sort of stay true to yourself if you're true to yourself you wouldn't greenwash you know if if you know that this is this is not complete this is not true don't speak about it i mean would you would you tell your children to do that and you know that's a that's a barometer that i use that uh, can i can i can i look at you know my my daughter and tell her that i did this and if and if that is not right 
I wouldn't do it. So, it is anyways about future. Sure, I think this. Thanks. See, garment industry is, of course, we are maxim one of the maximum higher in the in, in the world. The garment industry employs a lot of people, but the bigger damage is coming from maybe oil and you know oil industry or automobile industry. So it's not necessary for every garment manufacturer to be sustainable garment manufacturer. It is about following your calling, like what you stand for. And I believe that if you like not directly to answer your question, but just putting another perspective to it, that if you have a thought, a good thought, share it. Don't wait for it to get implemented because, um, you know, the evil have marketing department, unhealthy food have marketing, but healthy food doesn't have, there is no advertisement for Apple, but yes, burgers are shown on the TV also. So I, I personally believe that if you have a good idea, share it. And if you've done something good, share it. Don't be, don't be possessive about it that, oh, people will copy. No, like inspire people. Of course, we all looking, we all here to get inspiration from each other. And why not to share good things and good thoughts? And maybe your execution was not the perfect or not as good as the other person could have done. But idea is to spread goodness, you know, like. I think, I, I, I think the point of greenwashing is actually going and telling a consumer that I did this. Now, that's that's a place one where one has to be 500 percent sure. But uh, if you ask me frankly, if we wanna if we wanna leave a better planet, if I don't tell you what I'm doing, what are my best practices, and you don't tell me what are your best practices, it'll take us a far far longer amount of time to get there, right? It's anyways a journey. There is no destination here, right? So, uh, so one part is sharing with people that things that I'm doing, and that is more in, I would say, on one side of the spectrum, which is the industry side of the spectrum. To share that, hey, you know what, I did this, I I did recycled pet denim and I got the fabric from Raymond. I'm, I'm just using that as an example, it's an anecdote. While I go and tom tom about it to the consumer without really completely knowing that how much of regenerated fiber is there in that particular denim. And you know, there's 5% regenerated fiber and I go and say recycled pet denim. I think that is greenwashing. So, in fact, uh, I mean, I think most of us as brands, we, you know, we will be very conscious about what we are putting out there. But I also feel, uh, you know, this is such a topic of interest and he talked about sharing. So, there's also an oversharing going on. And uh, there are brands, I mean, very recently a brand called Lego, they talked about doing, uh, you know, uh, post-consumer recycled plastic uh, Legos. And then eventually after some time they came back and they said that, look, you know what, the Virgin one has lesser impact. So uh, while, I mean, I would say that is a sort of a unknown greenwashing in a way almost because they were definitely trying to get into the cred of trying to be cooler green product. So uh, I feel, you know, uh, all of us, of course, here do understand that, you know, there is a responsibility associated with that and definitely do putting the right thing out is quite important. Uh, thank you. I learned a lot from the panelists. I'll actually open up to questions before that. I want to give them a chance to ask me any question if they would like to, because I realize I've been, I've been asking them all the questions. Any questions from for me? So how do you answer that 100 rupee extra? Uh, so, the, I mean, the 100 rupee extra, I basically told him, uh, you know, my point to him was that you are looking uh, for uh, actually appreciation. I said that if you don't do that, you, you'll be penalized. So, either up, uh, I mean, calm, because if I am going to be the best brand in India or, or you know, in terms of the world, I need to have impeccable credentials. It's like saying, Ki, uh, Saj bolne ke liye paise do kya? So, uh, so that's the point. I, I was saying that you not doing that may be looked down upon. I personally believe uh, all companies, uh, all organizations in some form will be impact companies. So traditional businesses cannot exist. And my view on sustainability also is, uh, so I've had multiple, uh, you know, I, I've been doing this, you know, a lot of things before this was cool. Uh, and so for me, actually profit comes first. So I believe that, uh, uh, you know, sustainability is about continuing economic progress uh, with, uh, you know, human uh, life uh, improvement and protecting the planet uh, resources. I also believe all these are factors and as in these are multiples. So any one of them, zero actually does not lead to a sustainability. So that's my personal view of it. I mean, I don't, you know, you can say that being sustainable will stop all of this and, you know, let's do that. So I don't believe in that form and 
uh, i am a big believer in if anything can exist for the longer term that's sustainable if it cannot uh, then something somewhere is wrong uh, be it people planet profit uh, i also believe that i don't think the planet needs us to help it i think we are all uh, you know in, in my personal view i feel that we are just doing things for ourselves actually and uh, so that's my view anyway no i think uh, i agree you know many times just good business decisions are sustainable yeah right be it in terms of production in terms of uh, uh, you know marketing in terms of anything right uh, uh, we have seen this over a period of time sustainable not in terms of only earth or only in terms of good being good to people or in terms just staying true to your business principles doing what is actually right rather than what is fancy and what is you know in vogue and what is what people are talking about i think if you do that consistently over a period of time and you and if somebody were just to kind of look at that value chain you will realize that you are being more sustainable than not yeah and uh, in fact uh, two uh, other things i would like to say which may be slightly scandalous i think somebody talked about cotton uh, you know being sustainable i think over uh, a, you know over indulging in cotton is also not sustainable so uh, so i think while all of us yes uh, yes <laughs> Yeah, so there is a lot of issues. So while, while there's uh, microplastics coming in from the other side, so there are lots of issues across all sides. Uh, I don't know if the answer is sort of over-indexing on one product. Of course, we need to find our best ways uh, out on each of the material. Uh, for me, as a designer, I look at plastic as a designer's fault uh, because uh, the product was made. It had all the best uh, possibilities of actually access to a large consumer. Uh, where it failed was it didn't take into account post-consumer. uh life so if that was taken i don't think knowingly anybody would have gone here so uh, you know so I, i i think those are quite important considerations when we are looking at it we are if anything that you plan for the long term it will be sustainable so it the moment you think you know like moment i walk out of this door if i don't want to have a conversation with you it's not going to be a sustainable conversation so i mean that's just a personal take on this uh any questions from the group uh Shall I take that? Yes, yes, sir. There at the back. Can't. Efficiencies in the developing countries happens. So though uh, they keep one office with the green building that we are net zero or carbon neutral. So we should see that like. Uh, the de developed countries are making more emissions rather than developing countries so they should be the uh, pin point for india to grow on like telling that uh, we are net zero because we are making their product and sending back them to back that is a supply chain where they are uh, the most emission uh, factors for the developing uh, developed countries like us and european markets we should think in a that uh, that way and we should proceed that we can achieve anything as uh, make uh, india proud वेस्ट में यू नो आई यूजली गेट दिस फीलिंग की वो गारंटी वाला चीज चल रहा है प्रीवियस गवर्नमेंट वी हैड दैट गारंटी यू गिव गारंटी टू एजुकेशन सो इन वेस्ट लॉट ऑफ थिस थिंग्स आर वेरी सुपरफिशियल राइट यू डिसाइड अ गोल व्हिच इज सो आइडियलिस्टिक एंड फॉर एग्जांपल राइट वी आर इन आर्टिफिशियल ज्वेलरी आई विल जस्ट गिव यू अनदर एग्जांपल अबाउट 11 इयर्स बैक यूरोप केम अप विद अ व्हाटएवर नो रेपेक्स रेगुलेशंस व्हिच डजंट अलाउ यू टू हैव कैडमियम निकल लेड एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट व्हिच इज वेरी गुड राइट what i was reading uh, is that in the next 6 7 years they're talking about removing copper zinc and lot of other material so i was you know i was like really flabbergasted that if if you actually take out all this material what is actually left you know what can you make those artificial jewelry with and some of the friends that i spoke to they said ki iske baad sirf silver se bana sakte ho it's a very idealistic situation right uh, so uh, the west lot of times just decides on few things without actually getting into the nuts and bolts of in terms of how it will get implemented whether it is practically possible and then obviously you know shift all this uh, things to you know china india bangladesh let them do all the dirty work yeah uh, one more questions like on the domestic chemicals what we use daily we can give awareness to our children like why can't we use half paste for the brush and a shampoo of water putting that so that the dilution happens so this is the some of the kinds where domestic uh, pollution get reduced because we don't treat anything on the households which is led to the the municipal corporations like uh, this idea we got from many when we went for the events in the schools so this will be the uh, brain uh, 
straw mining for the uh, future generations where the chemicals plays a major role in all of the industry not in only in the fashion industries mm. uh, major industries where the chemicals has been used so i need one uh, uh, answer from the all the here who are sitting like why we can't like in the fashion industries every brand has their own different chemical requirements why can't we collaborate a single requirement on the chemical so that we can compile a single requirement so that the cost will be incurred for uh, different different part uh, things on the chemicals uh, i may have misunderstood understood the question i think uh, brands all i mean most of us uh, we go to let's say approve chemicals so there is some level of consolidation already there uh, not does, 100% no no see the i mean 100% uh, yeah i think we are all uh, you know uh, i speak for everybody here i, I think we are all uh, uh, adhering and complying uh, you know to that so i don't think I, I, and if we are not i mean and, and i'm not saying that we don't uh, we will not be able to uh, you know uh, practice in the future so i think uh, that is definitely there uh, i actually want to take up the earlier question which you had and uh, you know so west or specifically europe i think uh, what's happened is the regulation and the uh, you know the, the the framework of actually uh, looking after these things is very tight there definitely so the last couple of decades they have basically outsourced their uh, uh, not just the production even actually the post consumer waste to the uh, you know the country is also here i actually see that uh, you know going to come under severe challenge in the next couple of years as uh, uh, you know countries sort of uh, uh, you know grow and have their own confidence in their way uh the second thing is things like uh, you know the sustainable uh, you know development goals which anyway got pushed back most of us would have read that you know uh, the, by 2030 they were expecting to achieve something i don't think we are on track on there and so the next 5 years you are going to see severe legislation across multiple uh, areas trying to somehow you know close that gap i'm not saying that we'll achieve it but that is the pressure which is going to come so as businesses we will have to sort of mold ourselves into that space in some form Uh, to be able to even conduct our businesses so in one way i think we will anyway be more sustainable than where we are uh, we want it or not we will have to be yeah. uh, and uh, uh, so so I, i think that's maybe my optimistic thought on this conversation uh, any sustainable you know somebody who's sort of you know banking out just on the credibility of sustainability it will definitely matter and i'm sure they are doing deep research to even justify the existence of that space uh, for people like us uh, i i mean i did a straw poll as soon as we started this uh two questions basically did you choose a product because of sustainability and did you drop a as in did you penalize a brand because of this so both answers you, we we saw that there were very few so uh I, and and i think it's a similar thing outside also uh if you look at a desirable viable feasible product i think everybody first uh, viable and feasible is pretty much uh, a transactional product most decisions are made on desirability at that point specifically in fashion and uh, therefore uh uh you know what's happening is uh, from our side uh, you know especially uh, as abfrl uh, you know being uh, leading this space uh, this is something that we are doing internally we have our own policies and we ensure that we are at the best of standards uh, and the idea is to sort of make this product this thing desirable and, and then sort of create that demand back for that uh, i do not personally think that the people are going to say uh, ki mere ko sustainable wala chahiye and non sustainable nahi chahiye so i i mean i feel everything will definitely move towards that in the space yeah i wish that was an ideal situation you know consumer app and you are doing it today the industry is doing very well i so, appreciate yeah. so it. there will be a legislation uh, see uh, the i mean the same thing with sweatshop labor no it was there at one point of time and how many times you try tried in different ways people didn't move out because there was an economic uh, advantage uh, eventually it did happen and i think all of us specifically you know post i think oil and natural gas i think we are definitely one of the largest polluting industries uh, but we have a huge impact on an everyday life and uh, you know things will happen and i think they will move in that direction so uh, that's my uh, optimistic hopeful view yeah i think uh, i think to just add if you look at the ev industry you know it just boomed you know like nobody expected that india will you know get into buying the electric car nobody thought right i think that's the best part of india is that we leapfrog i think we should give the space you know instead of trying to you know ye nahi hoga ye nahi hoga i think we should try i think the best i i've seen i never expected that you know tata will sell so many ev cars in my wildest dream but that's what it is and let's use that as an example and you know let's appreciate everybody and move forward from here i think that's what i would say from here thank you yeah beautiful example i mean uh, ev is without enough charging stations imagine how much the consumer is uh, uh, you know going out on a limb to support this anyway thank you guys i think any other questions uh, uh, okay there's one more uh, i think that's the last question we'll take before we sign off
Uh, my name is Gautam and I've been in sustainability uh, business since last 14 years. Uh, I have few sharing. I don't have question here. Uh, we are also a water conservation company and compostable packaging manufacturer. I've been giving free water savers. People don't install it. Okay. Until there is a pain. The water tanker didn't turn up or, or the water supply didn't happen. Okay. Until that, they don't install it. So the priority in fashion uh, in garment or fashion industry is probably what I see is convenience or maybe fashion style or the cost. Okay, sustainability is not on priority, what I see right now. How, how you guys put that on priority is the responsibility each one of us hold. The second, yeah, <laughs> the second sharing uh, about the idea. I have an idea to suggest and recommend if the whole industry could come up. Uh, See, uh, study this company called TerraCycle, uh, which is there in Europe or other countries where, you know, they collect back the things, basically. Why don't, as a collective effort, we collect back the apparel, which probably I don't need it or I want to discard. It will also solve your problem, ma'am, uh, that they don't want to hand it over to anybody. Imagine all that could come back. And also we have people living below poverty line and this could go them. And at the same time, this will not enter landfill. In Bangalore alone, I would say, you know, the waste gets segregated and we have been rated highest for waste segregation in our city. But all that segregated waste again goes to landfill. It doesn't get recycled. Okay. So this is something which I have to suggest. And, and lastly, uh, that rupees 100. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to say that, you know, we have developed sustainable packaging which costs you cheaper than your plastic regular packaging. Thank you. And, and Thank please. you. I mean, all, all very valid suggestions and I'm sure you know, most of us in the room will pick on them. I think answering the first question, uh, you know, you have a great product. Like I said, if you, you have a feasible and a viable product, you need to make it more desirable. So it's, this is not just about how good the product looks. It is actually about getting into the, you know, it's, if you're looking at human centered design, how they are using it, why they are not using it, why you're not able to. So I think those are things which will actually help you get there. And I hope uh, you get that very fast. Yeah. Thank you.